Hello, welcome to the blueprint. So, Edu said, Arsenal's former midfield maestro, part of the Invincibles. I always thought he was the underrated one. He complimented Patrick Vieira as a player. Because he was left-footed, Patrick, obviously right-footed. Right -footed. Edu could chip him with a goal. He's a bit of an all-rounder. He's an all-rounder as a sporting director. He got a lot of stick in the early days, just like Mikel did. Because we were not doing well. But you've got to remember the mess, the utter mess that the whole team inherited from you know, Emery. And I, I can't even blame Emery for it all. Um, like the signing of Pepe. Apparently Emery didn't even want him. What a debacle that was. You know, I don't even know what happened with Pepe. I think, I don't even know if we got any money for him. I think we had to release it, just let him go. I think that's what will happen, say, with Anthony, with Manchester United. I've always been frozen out. And do you know what? Pepe, right, whatever you say about Pepe, that boy had talent. A way shit ton more talent than Anthony will ever have in his life. Anyway, I'm thinking this, and this is a crazy take, but if Arsenal really want to, to make sure the Premier League crown comes back and not another season of oh, runners up, whatever, just not finishing first, which I don't believe will happen, but just to make sure, I think we need two signings. Everyone's screaming out for cover for Saka, but hear me out. Now, Gabriel Martinelli's performance yesterday was concerning. Very concerning. And if it's concerning me, it's concerning a lot of other supporters. Last season was dreadful. His worst season in Arsenal shirt since he broke in. Trossard ain't helping his cause because Trossard delivers, as we saw at Villa Park yesterday. I think there's only one option, and it's Nico Williams. Now, I don't know if Nico Williams has just said, look, I'm not interested, I'm not leaving Spain. Now, I think Arsenal should be clever about this, real clever. And give him a contract that he wants, right? Give him, make him the highest paid player at the club. Yeah, it would piss other players off. Other players will want bigger contracts. Offer him £300,000 a week for four years with, with an option. But you say, Nico, your dream move is to Barcelona. So we will put a special clause in the contract. If Barcelona can buy your release clause, which will be in excess of a hundred million pounds, 110, 150 million euro, not the 43 it is now. Um, Cause this kid will light the Premier League up. If Arsenal land Nico Williams, it will be the signing of the summer. Possibly one of the best signings of the last decade. He's that good. All right. Um, I think he can be tempted away in the in this last week. If the terms and conditions are right and the right details are in his contract. But I don't think it would stop at Williams. Um, look. Arsenal, I've just let go of two attacking midfielders, ESR and Osmo Throw. Fabio Vieira has gone back to Portugal. And Enketia has gone. Right? 
As a striker and two offensive midfielders, creative, offensive, goals. Are you thinking Mikel Arteta is not going to address that? If, if you think not, you're mad because he has to address it because, God for sake, we had an injury crisis. We'd be in deep shit. Uh, you could forget a title. We'd probably be scraping into the top four. You know what I mean? If the wrong players got injured. For me, um, I think it's clear. Gabriel Martinelli has to be offered to Atletico Bilbao as maybe for Nico Williams to say, look, we're going to give Gabriel Martinelli to Atletico Bilbao as a year's loan to cover your position, plays the same position. Right, we know Barcelona have been interested in Gabriel Martinelli, but I don't just don't think they could afford him. Um, a year's loan with an option to buy for Bilbao. Right, Williams' contract no less than four years with one year option, but in that contract, uh, we're. Williams is to stay at Arsenal for no less than three years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I actually think it'd be good for someone like Cesc, Fabregas, the manager Mikel, to, to talk about the advantages of coming to the English Premier League and the effect it will have on his career when he goes back to Spain, which he inevitably will. And you could explain to him, maybe in three to four years, Barcelona could then actually afford to not only buy you outright, to pay your wages as well, match them what Arsenal are, 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 are paying now, which would be half a million euros a week if converted. That's big money, right? And yet he he would go straight. He would Williams on one side, Saka on the other, right? But I don't think Arsenal finished there. Um, they're going to buy number nine as well. They just are. Um, it's going to be either Niko Jokovic, or it's going to be. Um, Victor Oshman, sorry, Victor Gokarez or Victor Oshman. I think it's going to be Oshman. I think we're going to get him for around, I think we can get him for around 75 to 80 million. All right? Because I think Conte just wants rid. But the Napoli president's very powerful. Right? It's not down to Conte, it's down to the president at the end of the day. But. I just think they're gonna. He's on big wages there. I just think, you know, um, if Arsenal pull off Williams and Victor Oshiman in in this last week of the transfer window, oof, that is not only the biggest statement in England for a team who's finished runners up two years on the trot to Guardiola and City. That is a statement for every honour, not just domestically in England, league and cups. That is a major statement for the Champions League as well. Um, which I think with the best defence, uh, Moreno just signed. I mean, look at the options Arsenal have in midfield. It's ridiculous. The only player... I would be a little bit concerned about is who do we have if if Odegaard was to get injured? We don't have anyone there. Um, not many players do have a Kevin De Bruyne backup or a, well, City they got Foden and MMA and players like that. But so um, 
I don't know, you know, maybe Arteta, I think he he really wants Williams. Um, and I think he'd be quite happy to ship Martinelli out. Because if Williams was to come in, Martinelli wouldn't get near the team. Not with Trossard the form he's in. Um, and in Ketia, it just makes sense to sign a striker now. It's time. Uh, Arsenal have the cash. Um, I think maybe Reese Nelson might stay for one more season. Just as to give Saka a bit of a rest. Um, especially if we were to let Martinelli go to Spain on loan for a season or if someone put in a, a, a nice offer. I think Gabriel Martinelli is done at Arsenal. For me, all I see Martinelli good for is um, the last 15, 20 minutes in the game to bring him on because he's full of energy, he's quick. But Gabby, man, I'm gutted because he's a fan favourite. Most Arsenal fans love him. But his end product has disappeared. His output last season was appalling. And that's why um, he couldn't he couldn't get near the team because Trossard was just killing it. And look at the way Trossard started the season. He, he killing it. Clutch. When you, we needed him. All right. And you might think, oh no, Trossard will get less minutes time. No, he won't. He'll still be brought on a sub in the same position as Williams. He's a brilliant false nine. Um, and I think Mikel Arteta wants to win trophies. We all know what trophies Mikel really wants. He wants the Prem. He wants the Champions League. But he also wants the FA Cup. He, want, he wants the League Cup. He wants everything. And it's time with a squad. If we were to sign these, them two... We would have a, uh, an absolutely petrifying squad. We'd have a better squad than Manchester City. Um, for me, we we already had a better first team. They just had a better, a bigger squad. Um, I think it would really worry Manchester City and Guardiola if we pulled off these two signings. Look, I know there's a few Osterman rumours. Um, no Williams rumours, but I think Arsenal are working in hard in the background to get Williams. I really, I really do. Um, I think their only dilemma would be the wages. How would it affect the dressing room? Blah blah blah. I think they're willing to take the risk if it brings home the Premier League crown and the Champions League. Who cares? I don't. And the Cronkies want to bring home major silverware. Um, and you put the right clauses in Williams' contract. Barcelona get first refusal. And, you know, I'm sure there's a player that we will want from Barcelona. And we'll say, OK, we'll do... A deal for Williams, money, and this player. In Matt, Williams at the moment, I think Williams is world class already at 21. Imagine what he's going to be like at, in, in two or three years' time with Premier League ex behind him. It's going to make him more stronger, more powerful, just more elite. Um, the difference between La Liga and the Premier League is night and day, as in uh, the t the money the teams can spend. And, and I learned a lot of that from Rafael Benitez. 
on the overlap the other day. It was quite shocking. Real Madrid can spend um, 600 million a season transfers. Someone like mid table or just below can only spend 60. Everyone in the Premier League can pretty much spend as much as they got really, and FFP they can afford. Yeah, but you know, FFP is a big one. That's why homegrown talent is so important. Uh, anyway, look, maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe I'm not. Um, if I was to take one of these players, Osaman or Williams, I'd take Williams. I'd take Williams. Why? Um, because we can get Osherman next season. Yeah. Um, with Williams better than. Imagine Sack on one side, Williams on the other. Oh, my days. With an older guy pulling the strings. <laughs> oh, man. Exciting. It's exciting times. And um, who knows? It might not be Williams. It could be a Kingsley Coman. Who I know is available. It could be a Leroy Sane. Um, Serge Gnabry. Uh, no, nah, I don't know. I think he's on a deal, but I, I, I actually wouldn't want Gnabry, Gnabry back. I'd rather have Sane or um. But actually, I, I, I actually, I've, I've always loved Kingsley Coman. He's twenty eight. He's in his prime. And he wants to move away. So if the Williams thing fell through, Coman for me would be perfect. Because he can play on both wings and he can cover for Saka as well. So Coman and yeah, I'd then obviously I'd go for the Osama. Uh, Gukarez, Victor Gukarez, for me, I'd sign him, but nowhere near what uh, Sporting Lisbon are wanting. Um, And maybe towards the end of the window, Gorkarez's camp could sort of stand the hills and say, sell me, I want to go. You know, I know it's not always good when a player does that, but sometimes you just got to force, force the issue. So, Arsenal, I, I still don't get what Liverpool have made no sign and surely they've got to make a move in the last week. As good as Liverpool are and Salah, they're a Salah injury away from a disaster for me, Liverpool. They really are. Um, but they've got a lovely little striker that I'd take tomorrow. I'd take today in um, Jota. Why? He's not spectacular, but he scores goals. If I was Liverpool, I'd get rid of Darwin Nunes as well, try and raise some money. And get in, get in a world-class defensive midfielder, man. I don't know why they didn't go for the Fulham guy who, um, who Bayern Munich got, you know. He was 28. So what? The guy was class. I can't remember his bloody name now. Terrible names. I'm tired, people. I'm tired. Um, it's my uh, work schedule. Um, but I really enjoyed the game last night. It wasn't the most enthralling match for the neutral. But uh, Gary Neville said just before... Arsenal were just starting to get in the game and, and Watkins have had that chance. And I, he goes, Arsenal really need to step it up. And I thought, I said, Gary, don't speak too soon. We're not Manchester United, Gary. We're Arsenal. You know, we were dominating the ball. Odegaard was getting on the ball more. And then the difference was dragging Martinelli off. 
who I think is in his last season for Arsenal. I, I honestly think if he did leave out on loan, if we get a Kingsley Coman in, I think Martinelli's gone. I think we'll get rid of him. He'll be frozen out this season. He really will. Um, and it, it'd be a sad way for Gabby Martinelli to leave. He's a lovely lad. He really is. I saw a difference in his game when Gabby Jesus joined. I think he loved it that a more experienced Brazilian player has come into the team. But look at the way Jesus, I mean, no wonder City sold him. We got our money's worth out of Zinchenko. Not defensively, but the way that he sprays it around technically and the way he can come in the midfield. You know, I love Zinni. Um, and I don't want to sell Zinchenko at all. But uh, Jesus is another player that I think will be leaving Arsenal in the next year or two. I, I'd say next summer. I think Arsenal are going into a different stratosphere of... Sometimes you have to land certain players. Or I love it when you hear like, like Moreno. You know, only wanted Arsenal. Declan Rice, only wanted Arsenal. I haven't heard this talk from big players for so long. And it's so refreshing. But to get a Williams, an Osaman, I think if we pay the money, he comes and he signs. I, I do think it is pretty much that simple. I think we could sign Victor Osaman. No problem, and I'm I'm pretty I I I I think we might get him still, I do. Um, I think of the rotation we could have in all four competitions. Brilliant. Um. It's going to be really exciting last week. I just hear, I just, I'm going to be keeping my eyes out, not just for English or for bits of Romano, but Spanish outlets around Nico Williams or any other wingers in Germany as well. I'll be looking at keeping an eye out for Coman. I don't think Sane is going to come. Because he demand first team football and his position, he's never going to get in front of Saka. Whoever you think the better player is, Leroy Sane or Bakayo Saka, Saka is not being dropped for anyone. N no one. Well, Bakayo Saka, uh, for me, proved in the Euros he's world class once again for England. When has that boy ever let England down apart from one lousy penalty? Yeah, behind Harry Kane, he's England's most productive player for goals and assists by quite some way. And people keep going on about Phil Foden. Well, Phil, I ain't ever seen you do it in an England shirt, mate. And you can't say you ain't had opportunities. Yeah, maybe the next manager can find the recipe. Because one thing is for sure, Bukayo Saka is a mainstay for... Arsenal and England and will be a big player in the upcoming World Cup in the Americas which I will hopefully be going to with my best buddy um, anyway um, this is just a bit of a I'm getting tired I'm going to sleep soon I, hopefully I'll wake up and my phone will ting Arsenal in talks, Nico Williams in London, Osherman in London. And then I'll wake up. <laughs> wake up, Louis. No, I, 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 I tell you what, I, I think we'll sign one of them, but who will it be? Put in the comments. And thank you for 
the extra subscribers. The road to 100 is on. I was talking to a friend recently and we're going to be doing a podcast. That's right. Um, and yeah, um, I have friends on other bigger podcasts. I'm not going to drop names. Um, but the, the better my podcast gets and the more guests I have on, and believe you me, I'll have some popular guests on. Um, Arsenal guests, foot, big six rival guests, European, uh, Champions League night guests, you know, previews, after, you know, Galacticos talk. Yeah. Because us in Europe, we are all, Real Madrid are not the only team of Galacticos. They might have signed Mbappe, but haven't we all got Galacticos in our team? I think we have. Anyway, peace over and out. Six points on the board after two games. Brighton at home next. I fully expect three more points, even though they're a good start to the season. And then it's the international break. A dreaded one already. Christ. It must be World Cup qualifiers starting already. So it better not be friendlies. I'm sure it must be World Cup qualifiers, surely. Um, will we have a new England manager by then? Um, who would I want as a new England manager? Eddie Howe. Simple. Does he want the job? I don't know, but I think he's the most talented English coach out there. And Eddie, he's a bit like Miguel. He likes a strong defence, but Eddie knows how to play offensive, good-looking, se sexy football, where Gareth Southgate was pretty limp. Dick at that, wasn't he? I mean, the guy was just a coward, spineless coward. And I'm so glad Gareth Southgate um, resigned. He didn't get enough beer um, empties chucked in for me. I'm going all the way to Germany to watch that tripe. And to get to the final and not absolutely go for them Spanish jugglers. Spain were the best team in them Euros. But England got to the final for a reason. Why? Because we have the players. Yeah. I still think we can win the World Cup in the Americas. With the right management, England could be the next world champions, but I think the Spanish will have something to say along with the South Americans. Anyway, over and out. Please hit that subscribe button and help me out. And let's get this podcast up and running. Cheers, guys.